<laughs> yeah, I, was, I found out when I was 30 years old that uh, according to European blood tests based on clinical sample, I don't know, over 100,000 population, that my chance of living past age 40 was less than, much less than 1%, that I was headed for dying of a stroke, early stroke, and did in fact have a few little ones during my 30s, but had been about thousands of dollars of dental work to get 14 large amalgams out of my mouth. The, all, every one of them was off the, the Vegadent scale of up to 10 microamps. So they were galvanically very active, meaning they're leaching a lot of metals, mercury being the, the, the largest uh, component of silver amalgam fillings. And, uh, and yet, and I had symptoms that I thought, because I was doing alternative medicine, I, symptoms that I thought were due to mercury, and I knew I had mercury source in my mouth, so I suspected it. But the, but the other laboratory, the standard American laboratory tests showed no mercury. Didn't even show up in trace mineral analysis of the hair because it's an excretion tissue, mm -hmm. so it wasn't in it wasn't in the blood because it was chronic, it was long term. It's not that it was an acute exposure, it was, and it was storing in my tissues, not coming out in the urine. So, uh, didn't do a provocative test. Didn't know about that at the time. Mm -hmm. That 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 might have shown it, you know, with the MSA or something like that, a, a chelator to pull it out. But uh, yeah, over the years working with swimming against the tide, you know, the, uh, pulling heavy metals out of, the, out of a biological system it goes against the natural history of, of heavy metals where they build up in the food chain, they build up with age in a given organism. But we can reverse that, and that's what I've been working on for many years. And the thing that, that aside from the biological dentistry, to remove the cause, remove the source from the teeth, the thing that's helped me over the years with the cleaning out the organs uh, that I feel has, has been the most helpful is the guidance of <clears throat> the German electroacupuncture where we use the, the uh, readings on the acupuncture meridians and, and more recently identified acupuncture, electroacupuncture vessels uh, which run on both sides of each digit, each finger and each toe uh, to, to monitor the energetic state of, of the body as like a holographic mapping on the surface, uh, kind of like we have the homunculus, the, the body showing up on the ear and the iris of the eye or in the, cort the, in the, the cortex of the brain. Uh, in fact, in every cell, you have an entire map, the DNA is a map of all the functions of the body. Uh, so through that holographic system on the surface of the body, you can non-invasively see a, a snapshot in time of the body's functional state and that was being used in the early 1950s to monitor the quality control acupuncture practice in Germany. But then they had a, a the way things are often discovered, they had sort of an, an accident, a chance observation in a seminar where Dr. Vol was teaching practitioners how to do this method, again, only using acupuncture as the treatment at that time. They uh, measured on another doctor, uh, a, a point on the foot for the for the uh, prostate that was a, a disordered reading, a, lo, a, a low reading, uh, de which they would consider degenerative tendency. Uh, <clears throat> and then they it was time for a break. They took a break. They said, "We'll come back after the break. We'll you know start up where we left off." And of course, you know German style, they come back from the break and remeasure the baseline just to you know make sure we're starting where we think we're starting. But lo and behold, the the measurement was normal after the break. And Dr. Vol got very upset and said, I told you not to do any acupuncture during the break. You know, we have to <laughs> demonstrate for the whole class, teach everyone. He said, but I didn't. We just we went across the street and we got a sandwich and we, you know, and couldn't think of anything else they did. And they still had the coat on from going outside. And, and as they warmed up, took the coat off and you know, measuring it multiple times and talking about what, you know, what's going on. And, and when he took the coat off, now the disordered reading showed up again. So, so this was very bizarre for, for Reinhold at the time. And what is it, a magic coat? <laughs> put the coat back on. It can't be the coat, but put the coat back on, and now it's normal again. So he's got the magic coat. And then the doctor's being tested 
remembers, oh, I did stop at the pharmacy and uh, picked up a homeopathic medicine. I was had taken a, a, a home, homeopathy course, you know, a few months ago, and they took my case and, and recommended a medicine also based on my prostate condition. Uh, and, but I, I didn't take it. It's here. Here's the vial. It's not open. You know, so he holds the vial, and the energy oh, is yeah. normal. <laughs> it was in the pocket of the coat. It was in the pocket of the coat. Yeah. Now, since then, they've they've done studies to you know to explore what's the nature of this, and they find that 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 resonant energy from a, a, a properly selected medicine, a medicine that is energetically correct, I would call it, for the patient will radiate through a one centimeter vacuum, so which is about the size of the radiant energy field of the body as we'd see it on a Kirlian camera, uh, photographic, photographic plate. So the body has this radiant energy field function that goes out a centimeter, and the body's always sampling its environment in that space, which is really part of the body. It's not part of the cellular structure, but it's part of the energetic structure of the body, and so the body responds to everything within its field. If there's photons of light that are of a, a certain quantum size in that field, the body's able to actually utilize that physiologically and respond to it. And in fact, here's a great hint, <laughs> clue for, for uh, most people out there, is if you want to use, utilize Western medicine, uh, patent medicine, one of the best ways to do it is put it in your pocket. Talk to people. Go out and take a survey of ten people with migraine headache, and ask them if you know if they take Cafergot for their migraine headache. If they carry a, a pill in their pocket, will they get a headache that day or not? Versus if they have it with them, but it's in their briefcase or purse, they'll get a headache. If it's in their pocket, they won't get a headache because you're getting the the photonic information, and it's not only information, but it's energy. It's Energy and information are two sides of the same coin of a, a photon of light. Every chemical reaction in the body is associated with a particular quantum size of energy carried by a photon. It's, it's every chemical interaction is some kind of exchange or transfer or sharing of electrons and a certain photonic light quantum energy. So uh, Gibbs free energy describes in, in chemistry the, the the energetic change in a in uh, a chemical equation where you change from one set of chemicals to another set. And it's either endothermic or exothermic, depending on whether you gain or lose energy. It's defined by light. But we don't. Why don't we think of it that way? You know, because we we live in a culture that has, in in a way, I can it's analogy here in Hawaii is like the, the ancient Hawaiian culture. They had 400 different cultural specialists to heal different aspects, professionals to heal different aspects of life. So if you had an issue with a certain, certain element of life, if it was Pele, you would go to the Pele Heiau, to the kahuna there, and she would help you with that. Uh, so very, when we get so specialized as we are in our culture, there's not often a lot of cross discussion of cross fertilization between fields. Uh, if you look at, at lines, we call, call them lines of research. They're very much lines of, re they're linear. There's, there's very little in the way of exploratory research. The fu funding for research in our cu culture comes from government and corporations. So it's all in the government, as we know, is pretty much a corporation at this time. It's no longer of by and for the people. It's of by and for the corporations. Uh, looking at Monsanto and how they control the FDA and, and, and all that, uh, GMOs and all. It's all for profit. Yeah. So I understand and appreciate like having a homeopathic and not even necessarily ingesting it. I had a teacher once who just said, hey, if somebody's really crazy and you want to give them a homeopathic and they won't even take it, you know, just kind of like throw it at them, you know, like get their skin wet or something, it'll still work. But I'm trying to wrap my mind around, okay, what is it going to be the difference then? Like say you have an herbal formula, and I test, you know, herbal mm -hmm. formulas also when I'm giving them people just to see the resonance, but the difference between actually ingesting it, I mean, like, why not just, like, 
carry it around? I mean, or where's the, where's the difference? Yeah, yeah. I've I've happens. done a little bit of my own my own exploratory research uh -huh. to to suss that out for myself. Yeah. Like, how much of an effect does just wearing the medicine have? Uh -huh. And I found it was eighty percent measuring on the energy, uh -huh. not measuring the chemistry. Yeah. So you know, the, the chemistry is going to be more affected by a, more of a chemical dose for sure. Mm -hmm. But eighty percent of the energetic effects I found were just from having the energy in the field, not necessarily having to ingest it. Uh, I had one of my very first patients when I got into doing this, this work was so sensitive. She lived on a mountaintop in Vermont. She didn't leave, but she came down to New rural New York to, to, to see me in hopes that, that I could help her. Uh, she was blind from cataracts, couldn't consider going to a hospital or having surgery. She'd die of the environment, the anesthesia, the electromagnetic fields, the, the, you know, the chemicals and all that. And, and nevertheless, she tried taking the remedies that, that tested energetically correct for her, and it put her in the hospital, which she knew was likely to happen or could happen, but she just wanted to try something. to. She wanted to be a healer. She wanted to heal herself enough that she could begin to learn with other healers and help herself more and help other people. She was like in her 30s. Mm -hmm. um, and the second time she came to me, you know, I heard the updated history. Okay, you've been in the hospital. That's why I haven't heard from you. Okay. <laughs> and you're still needing carrots and what I forget what the second food was. And uh, okay, and I, th I think the second time she. I think she again wanted to try the, the medicine internally and did, and it was, I was just beginning, so I didn't really have too many other thoughts on, on the topic of how to approach it, but this got me thinking. Came back for the third, third round, had been in the hospital again, mm -hmm. and, and at this point I, I thought about it some more, <laughs> had some more time to think about it, and basically told her, I, 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 can't, I can't in good conscience sell you any remedies. <laughs> but I will test them on you, and I will do what I'm using to test them, is make up little vials. I'll make up little sample vials, just like the ones I'm using to test, because we know from the measurements, you know, your body energetically responds to this. You can take them home. You can experiment, explore, do your own exploratory research, see what it's like to work with those energies. And she came back for the next test saying, it was interesting, basically, I could, she said I could hold them in my hand for about a minute twice a day, and that actually seemed to give me, begin, was the first thing that began to, to give me some more, some improvement, some stability in my energy, that was actually helpful, anything longer than that was too much. It's like, okay, our range of sensitivity is tremendous as, as a species, we're, we're unique, individually. Uh, and ever since then, I, I, I muscle test and, and give each person a, a suggested dosage range, but I consider that a maximum so that if, if, if you, you know, I'm saying, well, you respond well to this, and, and, and here's what I think could be a, a good dosage to explore up to. Mm -hmm. If you want to try more, you know, we're only using natural medicines, and, you know, certainly up to the labeled dosage is probably mm -hmm. safe, and, you know, maybe more in some cases. But... Uh, that, that was my most sensitive patient. And she did improve to, to the point where she began to be able to study other methods of natural healing, became a healer, 